It is June 16th. My daughter is taking her final exam at school today. Three subjects at once in three hours. Previously, there would have been several exams. Each subject would have been given on a separate day. But due to daily rocket attacks, the authorities of Ukraine decided not to expose children to additional danger and now all exams are taken together. You see, in our country, even school exams are planned in such a way that children would have more chances to survive. I had a present for my daughter for graduation and the beginning of adult life. I wanted to give her an apartment in Kharkiv. It once belonged to my grandparents and later I became its owner. Before a full-scale invasion, it was a valuable asset. The apartment is in a very convenient neighborhood near the river. There is a subway station and many shops close to it. I thought that she could live there or later exchange this apartment for another place in Kiev, Lviv or wherever she would like to live. But the war nullified all these plans. My daughter does not want to live in Kharkiv for security reasons. It is only a few tens of miles from the city to the border with Russia. Almost every day rockets fly into civilian neighborhoods. Due to this, the price of housing also fell sharply. It is no longer possible to exchange this apartment for one in Kiev or Lviv. No one will want to buy an apartment and a house that was shelled by Russian artillery, near which remains the ruins of a destroyed school and other buildings. So for a while the apartment is used as a warehouse for local volunteers and I myself sometimes spend the night there when I move from one part of the front to another. And I want to say that I am still a happy person. I still have my apartment and my native city, although it suffered a lot, still remains. I have the opportunity to walk through the alleys I used to walk with my grandfather as a child to go to the park where I rode the carousel with my daughter 16 years ago. Yes, these alleys and parks suffered from enemy fire. They still smell of burning, but they remained. And many of my friends will never be able to return to the places of their childhood or youth. Papasna, Bakhmut, Volnovakha and at least a dozen more towns in eastern Ukraine were completely destroyed. In some of them, single burnt multi-story buildings remained and some were completely destroyed. Thousands of Ukrainians were left not only without houses and apartments, but also without the opportunity to simply walk around the places dear to their hearts. One of my colleagues from journalism work tells me that only a couple of burned bricks remained of his parents' house in a small town in Donbass. The school he attended was destroyed by an aerial bomb. In general, his entire native place is just a pile of stones under which decent local residents who did not manage to escape and died from Russian shells are buried. Russians themselves call it liberation. They take pride in themselves every time their bombs hits a Ukrainian buildings. Those who don't understand the Russian language are fortunate because they don't see this rhetoric on the internet after each attack on Ukrainian cities. They don't see how thousands of Russians rejoice at the deaths of women and children. For them, the death of Ukrainian is a celebration. The destruction of Ukrainian cities is a lifelong pursuit. It is some kind of necrophilic perversion that has engulfed the entire country.